So chemistry is a very difficult subject for a lot of people, especially because you have to find this balance between understanding and application. I scored a raw 43 in chemistry and these are four of the things that I was doing in the lead up to my exam that helped me do as well as I possibly could. Hey everyone, if you're new here, I'm Emil and I graduated from high school last year in 2020 with a 99.8 ATAR and a 43 in chemistry. Without wasting any time, I'll make sure to get onto the first thing I did, but make sure to drop a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel if you want more advice on how you can ace your exams. So the first main thing that I was doing before my chemistry exam was, surprise surprise, practice exams. If you've watched my video about the methods exam, this should come as no surprise to you, but there is a very good reason why practice exams are almost always one of the first things I do in all of my exams. The first reason practice exams are so good for chemistry in particular is because it tells you what things are high yield. High yield is a phrase used a lot amongst high scoring students and what it means essentially is the stuff that appears the most often and what is worth the most marks. Practice exams in chemistry are especially especially good at helping you figure out what things are high yield and what things are not. In addition, practice exams will help you to understand how examiners actually want you to be answering certain questions. Since chemistry has a lot of short answer questions where you might need to be writing out a lot of dot points or even a paragraph answer, it's actually really important to know what the examiners want to hear to get the three or four marks that might be available in the question. Another thing is that a lot of people are just told to do practice exams and they aren't necessarily given a lot of direction on the best ways to actually do them. What I did was I used my practice exams very consciously so that I actually got the maximum value out of them that I could. What this really means is that when you're doing a practice exams, you don't wanna be getting distracted. You want it to be as close to real conditions as possible. And you want to make sure that you're attempting it to your fullest potential. It's really important that you stick to time limits and you keep yourself accountable because if you don't, you can fall into these bad habits of not paying attention during your exams or just not having the stamina required to actually finish the whole exam in one go. If you're struggling with staying accountable, I actually highly recommend finding a friend or an accountability buddy to do exams with so that you're both forced to actually stick to the time limit and to focus for that duration. The biggest thing that you should take from these exams is that doing them is really important and that you should try to focus on the understanding of the questions and the understanding of the exam format that will actually help you answer questions. The second thing that I did in the lead up to the chem exam was focusing in on key phrases and definitions. To elaborate on what I said before, in chemistry, it's really important that you answer questions in a certain way and that you use a certain phrasing or definition to get those three or four marks in those short answer questions. Often examiners will be really tired because they'll be going through tons of exams and marking them in bulk. So they'll be looking for keywords in each of your answers. It's really important that in the lead up to your chem exam that you actually look at these keywords, what these keywords are, and how you need to apply them to your question to make sure that you get full marks. The way you go about learning this is either by asking your teachers or just going through the examiner's report from previous years. For example, for questions that might require you to use Le Chatelier's principle, you might need to go through the examiner's report and see how you need to phrase your answers to make sure that you get full marks. This is really important for other topics also like food, fuels, and equilibrium because you'll need to know the definitions of certain things to actually give your answer. Confidence is key and as a result, you need to be confident about the definitions before you even step into the exam because otherwise you might end up second guessing yourself. So the third thing I did was familiarize myself with the common calculations in the chemistry exam. Calculations end up making a lot of the marks in the chemistry exam. So you need to be familiar with using the calculations, doing the equations, putting them into your calculator and ultimately getting the correct answer. A lot of the mistakes people make in exams can be converting units incorrectly, using significant figures in correctly or just flipping fractions wrong or using equations incorrectly. What I did in the lead up to the exam was I went through an exam and I looked at all of the calculation questions and I went through each of the topics and I did calculation questions for each of them. I found that this helped me a lot because it ended up meaning that I was really confident on getting the answer in all of these calculation questions and I was able to trust myself in the exam. I also knew the most efficient ways to put them into the calculator and I knew when the calculator might struggle to give me the answer that I actually wanted. Going over all 
all of the types of calculations in the chemistry exam really thoroughly will mean that you avoid your chances of making silly errors on the test day. As a last little thing under calculations, I'd also really make sure to touch up on balancing equations because the last thing you want is to have a somewhat tricky equation to balance on the exam and struggle to do it or waste a lot of time trying to figure it out. The last thing I did in the lead up to the chemistry exam was making sure that I was really familiar with the data booklet. The data book plays a huge role in answering almost any of the questions in the chemistry paper and you'll definitely be using it in your exam. What I did in the lead up to my exam was I went through my data book and I looked at the tables, what I would use them for and I'd also look at any annotations that I might have made inside the book. Doing this is really important because in the exam when you need to look in the data booklet you should be very quick to find what you actually need and you should also know why you're finding it and what you're trying to find it for. And in addition even though it is important to know what is on the data book it's also almost as equally as important to know what isn't on the data book. For example there are quite a few equations that appear on the data book that change at different pH levels and there can also be certain ions that you are expected to know off by heart. As a result by one going through exams and two going through your data book you'll realize what things are missing and then you can know to commit them to memory. Doing all of these things will mean that you have all of your bases covered for the chemistry exam and that you can do as well as you possibly can. If you found this video helpful maybe check out this video where I go through my tips for the methods exam so that you can do as well as you possibly can.